having a great time. Uh, we've we've uh, we've laughed, we've cried, <laughs> we've uh, we've been up and down and and all over uh, <laughs> town, uh, Broadway, <laughs> Broadway to uh, <laughs> to the to the Brown School, and uh, and now we're going over to Isaac Fox. For our, for our third segment. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Angela, thank you so much for being here today. Absolutely. This uh, I only knew a little bit about you before this, okay. so hearing more of your story, mm -hmm. it is such a powerful story. Mm -hmm. um, and before I ask the, the question, I want to ask you just a couple of comments. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about naming mm -hmm. the two children, mm -hmm. and my wife and I have had two miscarriages. Mm -hmm. we have, we've been blessed with a large number of children. Mm -hmm. But we name both of those, and there is something really, mm -hmm. really powerful and really special about that. Mm -hmm. So that just resonated with me when you mm -hmm. mentioned that. But mm -hmm. and yeah. let me just say, you know, I think I just really mentioned the name of one of our children, uh, which is Summer's Justice. But then we have Judah, Judah Star. Okay, so, mm -hmm. Judah and Justice. Yeah. yeah, beautiful names. Mm -hmm. So the question that I had wanted to ask you about, I've been really interested over the last two segments, mm -hmm. realizing how much it ties in because mm -hmm. I'm seeing how important family is mm -hmm. in your story. Absolutely. Um, uh, you mentioned your parents' divorce. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the importance though of your father mm -hmm. kind of stepping in to keep you from having that third abortion. Mm -hmm. So my question really relates to the connection between family life and abortion. Mm -hmm. If we look at the Bible and I see you brought yours mm -hmm. back in the very first book of Genesis, right. We see God create man. He makes them man and woman. Mm -hmm. He tells them to be fruitful and multiply. Yes. And so we not only have the first man and the first woman, but we have the first couple. Mm -hmm. And it's within that context that new human life comes forth mm -hmm. in you know, their children. Mm -hmm. And of course, this can happen outside of the family context. But I think as Christians, we would take that to see that the ideal is that is within the family mm -hmm. that life comes forth, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so when we look around at our culture and we're now getting to the point where we're beginning to talk about your advocacy mm -hmm. for the unborn, right. we can look at many things um, that have helped lead to the prevalence of abortion in our culture. Mm -hmm. And I think at least for myself, it's very easy to think in terms of uh, maybe political or legal answers, mm -hmm. you know, the passing of Roe versus Wade, mm -hmm. of Casey, and mm -hmm. other examples like that. Mm -hmm. But it occurs to me that the rise of abortion in our culture also coincides with the sexual revolution, mm -hmm. with dramatic increase in numbers of divorce and mm -hmm. broken families. You know, now we're at a point where m most marriage marriages, the majority, mm -hmm. don't make it. Right. So this is radically different than things were 60 or 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I would be really curious to hear your thoughts on the connection between family and abortion. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to divide that into two questions. The first is the relationship between uh, family and abortion in terms maybe... The work you do, you probably have access to a lot of statistics. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, among those who seek out abortions, mm -hmm. are they more or less likely to come from single parent or broken family homes? Mm -hmm. Or are they themselves more likely to be unmarried or in a, you know, be single parents already themselves? Mm -hmm. And then kind of the opposite side of that question is, what can we do as we help advocate for the unborn mm -hmm. to also help uh, work for a renewal of family in our culture. I mean, I believe that family is the foundation of society. Mm -hmm. It's if the family goes, mm -hmm. culture, society crumbles as right. well. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Um, mm -hmm. And I think we're just in a really, really critical place mm -hmm. with that. So right. maybe you could talk to that, the connection between family and abortion, and then what we can do to help bring healing and renewal to the family in our culture. Absolutely. Well, you know, if we think about when Roe versus Wade was legalized, that was in 1973. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, in the 60s, one of the things that I talk about is just from the black family standpoint, okay, in this in the 60s, you know, the population of blacks was about um, 18 million, okay? okay? Now we've had over 20 million black babies killed through abortion. So more black babies killed than the entire population you know, back mm -hmm. in the 60s, all right? In the 60s, the vast majority of the 
of women and men were marrying. You know, in the in the 60s, only I think maybe about seven percent or so of, of couples were out. I mean, babies were born outside of wedlock. Right. You know, and um, that's in the black family. You know, and a little less. You know, in the Caucasian community. Sure. Okay. And then uh, there was no data back then as far as the Hispanic community, but you know, and and and, and others. But it just goes to show, you know, that in the 60s. You know, it was one way, and you were seeing seeing two parent households. Okay, right. Roe versus Wade, and all of a sudden you're seeing the breakdown. And as you mentioned, the revol sexual revolution was a part sure. of that. A lot of these things with Margaret Sanger and and the uh, the uh, birth the birthing of the birth control pill way back in what 1939 or so. Yeah, you know, roughly. so you know these things were intentional. You know, they weren't they were by design. You know, with different organizations sure. that wanted to destroy the family. Yeah. And they've been very successful in that up until this point. Um, and so you see the effects. You see the effects that it's had on the family, regardless of what race, the vast majority of, of families are not, marriages are not making it, like you said. Right. Uh, just in the church, whether you're Catholic or Protestant, yeah. you know, uh, in the church, you know, over 50% are ending sure. in divorce. So, uh, so that means children are being raised in single parent homes, you mm -hmm. know, in the, in the uh, black community, some 70%. You know, the babies are being raised up in a single parent a household and being born outside of wedlock. The vast majority of the and you women. You said that was six or seven percent uh, in 1970. -ish. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. So that's huge. That's a huge, that's a huge difference. difference. Yeah. Um, but then also just women having abortions. The vast majority of the women that are having abortions are, are single women. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're not married. And so, as you said, to your point, uh, one of the things, so that's the problem, you know. Right. But one of the things we can do is to begin to recognize that there really does need to be a restoration of family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that in and of itself uh, will will bring a, a decrease in the amount of women that are having abortions. Kind of automatically. Yeah, I really I really believe that. Not there's not to say, that's not to say that women that are married are not having some of the abortions. We do sidewalk counseling at the EMW, sure. uh, so-called surgical center, and um, you know, there was there would be married couples, but the vast majority were not. They were they were uh, single women, you know. Right. And so uh, we determined, as our organization, Sisters for Life, and you talk about ad advocacy, uh, we determined that not only do we need to do everything we can to help the mother understand she can make a decision for life and that she is far better than abortion, yeah. uh, but we've also determined that, and God gave us the strategy, that we need to see a restoration of family. And if we don't talk about it, we don't talk about how marriage is the reflection of God. You know, he, we are his greatest reflection, you know, uh, when we have a, a married couple, you know, right. inherit holy matrimony. 